All right, we have come to the end of our series on the book of, uh, book of Revelation. So last couple of weeks we've been working our way through that. Next week we begin uh, a different kind of a journey. We're going to be going through uh, the whole scripture. Again, we're going to start, go through May, work our way from Genesis all the way through to the end of the Bible, sort of in chronological order. So that's why we, we've got our big, uh, we're going to be starting here again, and we're going to do the whole, we did it last year, we're going to do the story again, looking at different texts, but in a way to try to um, get a grasp on the big story of Scripture, as opposed to just all the little stories as well. How do they all integrate and fit together? So how does the story end, the big story? Well, it ends uh, with the book Revelation, but it ends with hope and wonder and recreation. Sorrow is forgotten, sin is vanquished, darkness is ended, the temporariness of time turns into the everlastingness of eternity. Now, as John tells the story for us, it's almost as if there are two stories going on. They keep flipping back and forth. One of the images, uh, and oftentimes it's the part we focus on, is is the suffering, the death, the plagues, all the war and stuff that's going on. And there's, there's a lot of that, but also it alternates between this story and a story of visions, of the picture of God uh, in power and glory and honor and where there's perfect peace. And it keeps going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, giving both of these images. Um, in many ways, I, I think John is, is doing that, is, is giving us two contrasting visions um, of, uh, on one hand, what it looks like for those who follow the way of God, and on the other hand, what opposition to God, what's, what's the, the consequences of opposition to God. Um, so we have these two different alternating views that we see. We have what God intends and what happens when fear and greed and death and power run unchecked. We have the way of the beast, we have the way of the lamb, the way of judgment, the way of salvation. We have these two visions before us. And John's vision is prophetic, not necessarily in the sense of predicting future events, but in laying out that we have a choice that we need to make. And where we invest ourselves, where we invest our lives, has very real eternal consequences for us. In some ways, I, as, I, as I look at the, the vision of, of John and how it works in our lives, it's sort of like uh, Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol. You guys know the story, right? Um, Scrooge has a vision, three visions, of what he sees what the future might be like, right? And he has a, makes a choice then. He says, I, can, yeah, I know what this, if I, if, I, if I make no change in my life, this is where my life is going to go, and I don't like what that picture looks like, but I have an opportunity. I am still alive. He realizes when he wakes up the next morning, I can take a different path. There's a different way to live, right? I think that's what John was trying to get these early Christians as they were hearing this message. He says, you're still alive. Life is hard right now, but we know there's a path uh, that goes one direction, encouragement to take this other path. We face the same kind of choices all the time. We're bombarded with messages. Messages to, uh, to hate or fear anyone different than us. Messages that equate money or weapons with power. Messages that the one with the most toys wins, or you snooze, you lose, or might makes right. We have all these messages we hear all the time in our world around us. That's one way in which we can live. But Jesus says there is another way a way that he showed us. He didn't just tell about us. He showed it, what it looks like. What does this path look like of light and life, of grace and forgiveness, of hope, of love? The path we take makes a difference. And John closes his vision that we hear today with uh, ultimately where this path of Jesus will end up. So let's go to Revelation chapter, chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. And they will be. 
God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Crying, mourning, pain will be no more. For these first things have passed away. And the one who's seated on the throne said, Look, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Interesting passage. Um, the new heaven, the new earth says the sea is no more. Not that there's something wrong with the ocean. Um, but uh, again, for, for the Hebrew people, the ocean represented chaos, represented uh, in, in the, uh, uh, all that was unknown and terrifying. And he says we get rid of the unknown and the terrifying. We don't have that. For people living in the desert, the ocean was a scary place. right? And so it says the sea is no more. There is no more of this terrifying unknown. It talks about... Um, heaven coming down like a new Jerusalem. Um, remind, we've, we've forgotten this, but they were very aware that Jerusalem had been destroyed. There was no Jerusalem. The Romans, 70 AD, they got tired of the Jewish uh, revolts all the time and they laid siege to Jerusalem and they tore down the walls. The temple was no more. There was no temple. There was no, Jerusalem was a pile of rubble. But here in the vision, a new Jerusalem comes forth. There really, there's, in the book of Revelation, there's no, not, nothing like a rapture. In fact, it's opposite, right? In John's vision, we don't go up to heaven at all, right? God is the one who comes down to us. Did you hear that in that? It says not going up to heaven. It says God comes to dwell with us. Heaven comes down. Um, now, again, I don't think this is a, necessarily a literal description of what's going to happen, um, but he, John goes in this great detail about what uh, the new Jerusalem looks like. And it's beyond comprehension, right? It's made of crystal and gold and pearls. He says even, even the foundations, he says, are made out of jewels. And its size is beyond imagination. It's 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles deep, 1,500 miles tall, right? This is a big, this is a big city, right? So this is, he's just trying to use as big a numbers as he could think about to say this is bigger than anything that we've ever experienced or imagined. And here's the part I, I, I find fascinating. He says, I saw no temple in the city. No temple. For its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. Nations will walk by its light. The kings of the earth will bring their glory to it. Its gates will never shut by day, and there will be no night. No temple, no priests. By, I infer by that no religion. There's no, we don't have to have human attempts to try to experience God and, and try to frame that in some way because we will be in the presence of God. We don't need to create some way to try to uh, help that relationship because we will live, be living that. Gates are there, but the gates are not meant to exclude. They don't have doors, right? They are always open. We have image after image cascading over us, and still the vision continues. It says, The angels then showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing fruit in every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Again, in a dry and thirsty land, to have a river running through the middle of the city is a wonder. And with the tree of life, it's like a return to Eden. Uh, for, and the leaves are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. 
it's good to have a glimpse of the destination because along the way, sometimes it's easy to lose sight of where we're going or why we're doing what we're doing, especially when we, especially when we run into obstacles and life gets hard. But, I, but the, the reality is that the journey is more than simply the destination we get to. I mean, that, as important as it is and as good as, as important as it is to have that in view, the journey is how we live each moment between now and then, how the way of the land is reflected in our lives, in our relationships with work and family and friends, our, our daily living. When John shares this vision, with these seven churches in Asia nearly 2,000 years ago. He, was, he wrote this to try to help them in their daily lives, in their work, in their family, with their friends uh, as that lived out. They were, uh, their faith communities were facing great challenges and they needed encouragement. Well, the vision still speaks to us. We, like them, still need that encouragement. We face challenges as well. And we have this invitation at the end of the book of Revelation to simply to come to make this journey uh, and into the loving arms of God. Let me invite the band to, to come back up here. Um, we're gonna, uh, there's been so many songs, uh, and we've been, it's nice this last month we've been able to sing all these songs that use the images and phrases from the book of Revelation, um, uh, sing songs of praise. Um, they sort of be um, they sort of an appetite for heaven. Heaven becomes where we are, constantly singing you know, praises to God uh, in the language of our liturgy, a sort of a foretaste of the feast to come. So let's rise. Uh, we'll sing uh, one of these wonderful hymns. I'll praise, I'll, I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. In the news, as we've been uh, this lately, we've been hearing so much about Houston. You know, it's just starting to unfold. Uh, it's hard to imagine a week ago uh, what, is, what has happened in this last week. And so many people said, how do we... How do we help? Well, how do we make a difference uh, in this huge thing? I'm, uh, one of the things I was, it just it happened to work out this way is our national youth gra- gathering, uh, every three years we get 30,000 high school youth to get together and this summer they're gonna meet in Houston. Uh, no shortage of projects to work on and so to bring in 30,000 people ready to do three days of service projects uh, down there. And so we'll bring an army of our young people down there uh, to help uh, this, this summer as, as, as we do that. Lutherans know how to do this. You know, we've got a long experience. We are, we are still down in New Orleans. There are still Lutherans working to help people rebuild New Orleans after that. Uh, we are in there for the long haul. After the Red Cross has pulled out and they've gone on to the next big disaster, Lutherans are still there saying there's still work to be done. It's one of the things that we do well. And so one of the ways, if you're looking for a way, there's lots of ways to help. Uh, one of them is our, what we call our Lutheran Disaster Relief Fund. Um, it, it's, it's, I like it because there's no overhead at all. Our regular offerings that we've collected pay to have staff and ha- or organization be there. So when we make a special gift to Disaster Fund, 100% of that goes towards the disaster because we've already, by our regular offering, created the infrastructure to be there uh, for that. So if you make a special gift, and if you can do that, you can, there's a, our newsletter. It's got the link. You can go online and do that. Or if you want to make a special check sometime, anytime that, uh, in the months to come. We're going to be here for years doing this. But if you, if you uh, identify it for Lutheran Disaster Relief, Hurricane stuff, we'll make sure that that gets there uh, to be that, uh, that, uh, uh, for that work. So thank you for all that you do. Yes? He did. He's down there working? Okay. Well, wonderful. Yeah, there's huge, huge kinds of needs there, you know, and so part of it is to try to figure out, you know, what we have here helps in that, helps in that process as well. And there may be time as well. Again, this is years down the road. Maybe we can even get a, uh, you know, why should the kids have all the fun? Well, we could get a bunch of adults go down there for a, for a service project uh, and maybe, uh, and I know after Katrina came through, one of the, some of the Bible camps uh, down there just set up their Bible, transformed their Bible camps into work camps where people could come down and then stay there, get, provide using the Bible camps as, as housing for work crews because I'm sure they'll be needing, needing that as well. So maybe that's something we can look at, you know, if there's some others who want to, to go down and help with that as well. So we'll pray. Lord God, we thank you for 
the ways in which you bless us. And we Lord, pray, Lord, now that you might use some of these gifts for your glory to help those who are in need. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to move into uh, a time of prayer. Um, uh, and we're going to use a, a song, Old Spiritual, Shall We Gather by the River? Now, the river they're, uh, um, they're talking about is this river that, throw, that flows from the throne of God, from the book of, of Revelation. I remember um, as a kid singing these songs, I had no idea it was, I was book of Revelation. You know, I'm going to go down by the riverside. You know, I thought it was just a fun place to hang out, go fishing, swim, and stuff like that. Uh, but no, the river was the, river was the image of, of God's provision of life. Now, obviously, we saw in Houston, you get too much too much river can be destructive, right? Um, but our picture of image is not, a, uh, is not a river that overflows its banks, the river that floods, but this is the river that brings life to us. Are there those we want to be remembering in, in prayer today as we, as we gather? Certainly the, the, the people of, of Houston rebuilding their lives. Are there others? Then yeah, volunteers who are down there trying, making a difference. And for many of them, the people who live down there were, were hearing the stories of, uh, of a lot of the, the emergency people. They've lost their own homes, and there they are. Their own homes are gone, and they're out there helping others and not able to take care of their own families. I mean, huge impact for our, the first responders and, and for the care people, uh, medical profession, uh, all around. It's, just, it's hard to imagine the scale of, of what's going on down there. Others? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Missing dogs show up before they get home? All right. Okay. Safe travels for all those who are going to be traveling during these days as well. Yeah, Ron? Oh, school starting. So we'll pray for the students and for the teachers and parents are going, woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, new adventure, new year begins for many. Other concerns? <coughs> well, let's, uh, let's just, we'll sing a verse. We'll pray a little bit, sing a bit, sing and pray. You know how this works here, so. We do the chorus. Just get us into this. Two, three, four. Shall we gather at the crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the Lord God, we gather today um, to begin this sort of Labor Day weekend. We thank you for the gift of, of labor, for productive work to do, and for those who've worked to make sure that we've got time to relax, be able to take breaks and, and Sabbath time as well. And we pray for those who are, are finding that may find relaxation and refreshment during this time, safety for those who are traveling, that they may find their way safely home, and for missing dogs to find their way safely home as well. We pray as we uh, come back and begin a new school year for teachers and for the students and the staff and parents and all as we begin this new adventure. On the margin of the river, washing up 
at Silver Spring. We will walk and worship ever all the happy golden days. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. Lord, we pray for those who are um, need healing in their lives, um, whether it's physical or mental or emotional. There's so much brokenness around us. We pray that um, you might be with um, Betty Tyne, um, living in chronic pain all the time, that you might be with her. And, and now as things are uh, seeming to get uh, towards the end of her life, that you would comfort her with your presence. We pray for the, the uh, Thelma, Thelma Booth, grieving her death, that you might be with them and comfort them with a holy and a certain hope. Surround them, use us as your hands and feet to bless them. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace our spirits will be Lord, we pray for those who um, have too much water in their lives. For the people in Houston, and not just Houston, from the Rockport where they came, and as the storm moves its way across the country, for many who are undergoing um, flooding in their lives. We give you thanks for those who, uh, who are selflessly serving, those like Kent who have gone down to be able to provide what help and relief that they can. We thank you for those who are on the ground and uh, and providing uh, comfort in which ways they can. Use our gifts to bless that process as well as people rebuild their lives uh, with this hope that we have in you. Lord, we thank you for the many ways in which you are with us. Use us as your hands and feet throughout this day, throughout this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Soon we'll reach the shining river. Soon Pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river. We gather now around our, uh, our altar and we tell the story of God's great love for us. On the night in which he betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks. He said, drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
We do communion by intinction, which means we'll give you a piece of bread and then present with the chalice, and then you take the bread and dip it into the chalice. The chalice has alcohol-free wine. Uh, we have our regular bread. There's also a gluten-free bread for those who prefer to have that. I invite our assistants to come forward, um, and as soon as we we have our stations ready, we invite you to come and join us as well. given for you, body of Christ given for you, blood of Christ shed for you, blood of Christ shed for you, blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and always. Amen. A couple uh, announcements as we, uh, as we get ready to head out from here. Um, 
Again, take the bulletin home. There's lots of great stuff in there. Uh, I just was became aware of a new ministry that's available starting up in, in River Falls here doing respite care for caregivers who have uh, people with, uh, with uh, dementia problems. Um, that they have a, a daycare where you can drop them off for, from 9 to 3. Uh, it's at the first uh, uh, congregational church up in River Falls. And so they're having an open house if you want to take a look at that, see what it looks like. Information is in the bulletin there. We're continuing to do our work down in the basement and in our room um, off, to, off the kitchen there. Uh, some new youth space that we are working on. Uh, we did, uh, the big dumpster is gone and so are some of the old couches we had. So uh, if you have a, if you're looking to uh, upgrade your own couch and want a good place, a uh, good reason to buy a new couch, donate your old one to the church or just buy a new one for the church. You could do that too. Um, that uh, we're looking for some, uh, some comfortable seating that we can use there as well. Talk to Chris about what she wants. She, she knows all about what kind of couches to have. So uh, we can do that. Um, next Sunday is Prescott Days. Hope we got a parade, right? Does this work? Yes, um, yes we have a parade. We're going to have the parade next Sunday. It's at 2 o'clock. We meet here at the church at 1. We have a float for Joy Lutheran, and we just, it takes us about 10 minutes to decorate. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big deal. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just people who would like to walk along with the float um, or ride in the float. In the, um, handing out goodies, so um, come see us next Sunday. All right, handing out, are we handing out pencils? Is that what we're handing out? And other little um, goodies. Goodies, Yes. all right, good. It's a good way just to, you know, to, to, you know, you get to smile a lot and see lots of people and wave and, you know, feel like you're a prom queen going, you can wave if you want. So, it's fun. All right, uh, dish team. We, we've got uh, we've got eight people so far. Oh, Kelly's got the list here. Woohoo! All right, so on your way out, you can add your name to the list. You can say, "I can work early shift, late shift." Uh, our first Wednesday night meal starts this Wednesday. Beef stroganoff, and so uh, Ron said he's organized a team for the first week, so we don't have to worry about this week. But for weeks following, we want to be able to have enough teams so we can have an early and a late shift. So take a look at the times. Uh, once a month is all we're asking uh, someone to be able to help for an hour and a half. Uh, uh, but it provides a wonderful, uh, wonderful gift to our community. Uh, Kelly does the hard lifting of doing all the cooking and stuff like that. But uh, we can help out by, by cleaning, helping her set up and, and cleaning up. Uh, makes a huge, huge difference. Fall schedule starts in two weeks. Not next week. Next week we're still one service. 9.30. Uh, it's Prescott Days, and everyone's busy with getting the parade and all that kind of stuff. So next week, since Prescott Days, we still got one service at 9.30. Then two weeks from today, we go to early service, late service, a lot of our other things. But a lot of our things are starting already in September right away. So take your bullet home. You'll know what's happening with life there. Any other announcements we need to make? Here. All right. Let's get our musicians back up for our closing hymn. We got done a little early today. Should I do the sermon again? Yeah. No, all right. All right, so, all right, let's, uh, let's rise for our, uh, our closing song, People of Hope. Two, three, four. We are people of hope, alive in a mystery, growing in faith, learning to love, we are people of hope throughout all of history, held by the one who will never let go. We are dead in our striving for wealth and for mind. But God, rich in mercy, has loved us to life. faith, learning to love. We are people of hope throughout all of history, held by the one who will never let go. We are what God has made us, created in Christ. 
your justice and mercy to be our way of life. We are people of hope, alive in the mystery, growing in faith, learning to love. We are people of hope throughout all of history, held by the one who will never let go. In the journey every day, we're led by the Word, saved by grace. We are people of hope, alive in the mystery, growing in faith, learning to love. We are people of hope, throughout all of history. Held by the one who will never let go. Let's go in peace and serve the Lord.